The first student I'd like to introduce to you is the student we call the doubter. And if you look on the screen here, you'll see a picture of her. She's not sure if she can make it. She's not even sure who signed her up for Pathway Connect. <laughs> a friend, a mother, a bishop. But she's there the first week and the lessons are getting hard and it's tough, Elder Holland. And she doesn't know if she has what it takes and she doubts herself. This is a situation many of our students face. And as you, as you think about this student all across the church, what counsel will you give to the student who doubts their ability to succeed? Well, thank you, President Gilbert. Uh, what a wonderful issue to start off with because I think it's so broad and so common and everyone in this audience, and I want to greet everyone in the audience, those who are here in the auditorium with us and those who are across the face of the earth, we're part of a monumental moment in church education in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is one of those pivotal marks in our history uh, that will uh, we won't fully understand till we look back at it uh, years and maybe decades from now. But uh, I say that by way of introduction for the panel to you. We're grateful for what you're doing and we're thrilled to participate. We want to be supportive. Now the, 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 the doubter. Uh, this, I don't want this to immediately have to get theological, but who do you suppose is the father of doubt? If you had to have an, uh, an antonym to doubt, wouldn't it be perilously close to faith? Um, easy to say, not so, not, not always uh, as easy to do. But I would start with the idea that uh, perhaps above all else, that God is on your side in this. Uh, this. This is a battle for the souls eternally of men and women. This is part of the plan of eternity. And it was not meant to come for us to come here and to be uh, doubtful or discouraged or depressed <coughs> or blunted uh, or muted. Uh, we are here to grow and blossom and develop eternally. So while there are some practical things we can talk about, keep the doctrine in mind and remember who you are. And related to that, I'd say in this audience, the extension of families in this panel and everywhere out there in that audience, there are people who have said exactly what this student says. We've all had doubts some way. We've all had difficulty some way. We've all worried about things, whatever it, it might be. And we have just untold stories. And there'd, there'd be a, a, legions of stories in Pathway right now of people who have already overcome some of those doubts and, and, and been able to succeed and, and be on the road to success. So, so look around you. Look at, uh, I say this to missionaries all the time, fearing and trembling and terrified and, and I can't do this and I'm going to go to the MTC and what does that mean and I don't know this language and, and uh, I just tell them to stop hyperventilating, take a breath, look at tens of thousands, now millions who've done it. And it, it gives you a little hope and a little help uh, to say that others have done it and I can do it too. We're newer than that in Pathway, but you're going to be the people to whom others will look and say, they did it. I can do it. One doctrinal point to, to, to cap it off, and I'll defer to my, my panel colleagues, back to the doctrine, back to the divinity of this. You've got help. You have divine help. You are able, you're far more able than you think. We are all more able than we think. We're all capable of infinitely more than we do, and we must not let our fears get in the way of that. But beyond your own help, beyond your own ability, you, you have help. We are children of God. We have divinity in us. We have potential and promise and covenants and privilege that uh, we haven't even begun to tap. And there are the legions of heaven that are prepared to help you fulfill that destiny. This is, uh, here's your first homework assignment, okay? This is school. You've got an assignment, all right? I want, I want you sometime in the next 24 hours to read the sixth chapter of 2 Kings, okay? Syria is at war with Israel. Israel has an advantage because it has a prophet. 
And the prophet has a little helper who is terrified at the onslaught, the army that is coming toward them. Talk about doubt. Talk about fear. Talk about terror. This, uh, this escapee from the Aaronic Priesthood program is wondering, wh who's going to help us? How are we going to survive? And the prophet Elisha says, there are more that be with us than be with them. May I, may I give you a little lead in to this story and I'll ask you to read it when you get home. When the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, a host compassed the city with horses and chariots. And a servant said unto the prophet, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And Elisha answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed, and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes, or hers, that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots, chariots of fire, round about the prophet Elisha. Please have the eternal vision of this work that a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is entitled to. You know things no one else knows about education, about heritage, about divinity, about angels, about answers to prayers, about prophets, about promises. Uh, remember where the doubts come from, dismiss it, and be believers. That was more of a speech than you wanted. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Elder Ben or Elder Cook? Uh, as I uh, came in here and looked out uh, over the auditorium, uh, uh, Rich Bennett, my uh, good friend and barber, is, uh, is out here. And uh, uh, he told me last Tuesday when I got my hair cut a little bit about uh, being in this program. Now, uh, I, he cuts my hair every two weeks. Now, that's, that would be a little bit of surprise to Elder Bednar, that somebody with my haircut needs to have it cut every two weeks. I thought it, I thought it would be every two years. <laughs> but my good friend cuts my hair every two weeks. But I, uh, I've just been so impressed. It's been a few years since he was in school. And I don't know that you'd call him a doubter. He's very talented and uh, he's, he's uh, somebody who uh, has great depth to him. And I just have to say that I'm so impressed. He looked back and said, you know, do I really want to do this in school? And uh, I've been out a few years, and uh, is this something? And then I've been to him uh, a few times since he started, and he's loved it. Uh, he's felt like it was such a spiritual uh, growth situation for him. Uh, he's found that the things he's studying are uh, uh, giving him a, a great insight and a blessing with what he's already doing. And uh, so I'm just, uh, I'm just very impressed and uh, that somebody, that anybody and all of you out there would uh, get rid of the doubts and uh, be willing to jump in and, and, and do this. And so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you're here in this audience and across the world and are, are undertaking this uh, significant step in your lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would recommend a very simple thing. When you have those doubts, uh, just repeat to yourself the first article of faith. We believe in God, the Eternal Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Ghost. It's the Father's plan of eternal progression. We have come to the earth to learn from our own experience the good from the evil. We're blessed through the atonement of Christ to learn from that experience without being condemned by it. His atonement... Both help, it helps us to overcome sins and mistakes, and it strengthens us to do what we otherwise could not do. And the Holy Ghost is a teacher. So the first article of faith indicates the resource from heaven that is available to every person who will act in faith and follow the teachings of Christ. The plan, the atonement, the teacher. Sister Bingham. Elder Clark, Elder Clark. Hey, I, I, I learned this from Elder Bednar, so uh, if it sounds really good, it came from him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So there's a classic scripture about this in Ether 12, 27. And we sometimes read this scripture incorrectly. The scripture reads, And if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness, they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. Sometimes we read that as weaknesses, but it's weakness. That means we all have the weakness of the natural man. We get lazy, we get afraid, we doubt, we get subject to all sorts of maladies. But the Lord says that if you will humble yourself and come unto him, he will make th weak things, and that is what's natural in you, strong, through the power of his atoning sacrifice, through his redeeming power. And it says here, for if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then will I make weak things become strong. And there's a, there's a kind of lesson in there, which is exactly what Elder Bednar just taught, which is we have to act in faith. Faith is a principle of action and power. That's the first principle of the learning model. And we have to act, but act in faith. But if we do, power flows into our lives through, through, the, through the redeeming and strengthening power of the Savior. It's a true principle, and it's a marvelous blessing to each of us through our whole lives. So the pattern you're learning in Pathway as you take on hard things will stay you through your whole life. Because if you think Pathway is hard, wait till the next phase of your life and the next one after that, and the next one after that. There's just lots of hard things that come, and we're learning how to deal with them in exactly the way the Lord ordained, to act in faith. Great. I've, I think we've heard remembering that we have help, and that the heavens are lined up to help us. The atonement can, can help us. That, you know, everyday people can do great things, and that we shouldn't be afraid uh, to have weaknesses because the Lord can make them strengths.